Hello, and how often does one get to introduce a completely unknown, yet wonderful, new, rediscovered artist of the 19th century? Well, that's what I'm doing today because this is an exhibition, the first in my lifetime that I know of, of the work of John Louis Pettit, who had never come to my attention before Quite by coincidence, I sat and had dinner with the man whom you're about to meet, Philip Modiano. Philip, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you, Andy. And Philip introduced me. Philip has spent much of his recent years um, investigating, collecting, collating, researching the work of John Louis Pettit. And I was sceptical, as I often am, because people often sort of buttonhole me and say, oh, I, I know, a wonderful artist. Have you, have you seen? It's usually yeah. um, either their wife or their husband or their brother, and they're not wonderful <laughs> at all, and there's an ulterior motive. But in yeah. this case, Philip wanted to tell me about this 19th century artist who had been completely forgotten. And Philip told me he's a, an amazing watercolorist, the, the equal at times even of Turner. And I thought, oh, can this really be true? And then I saw the work, and I thought, mm. it is true. So how wonderful, and congratulations on the show. It's just fantastic to see. Well, thank you. It's certainly been a long time coming. It's the first show for 160 years. The pictures have literally never been seen by anyone except for that one there. 160 years since this artist's work's been seen. And, and when you first showed it to me, I was looking at it on a little computer, yeah. or, or even on your phone, I On think. my phone, yeah. yeah. So I was looking at these little things and thinking, actually, gosh, this looks really good. Yeah. And yeah. then when I see them here, in the flesh, I'm so, yeah, and I'm so struck better. by the scale of them. Yeah. Because yeah. he's a watercolorist, yeah. but he, he, he watercolors on a scale that is about twice as big as what you might expect. He's I mean, if you think of Girton and Cousins and so on, you know, you. This is, this is quite monumental as, as, as far as watercolours go. He started smaller and then from the middle part of his career he went to this size because he wanted to show them and he was showing them in big audiences in Victorian in England and I think that's why he, you know, he, he went up, he graduated from the small, about half that size, to this and these are now wonderful. But to, to give you an idea of the range of subjects, I mean, just these three images, and obviously Philip, who knows his work inside out, has chosen the best of Pettit for this small exhibition. But you've got this absolutely wonderful, fizzingly energetic, atmospheric depiction of simultaneously, you know, shipping and a Gothic cathedral. Here, even, I think, you know, one of my favourite images of mm. all of Pettit's work, because mm, mm. how many Victorian artists dared to actually confront and look at and depict the exactly. Industrial Revolution, the smoke, exactly. the smog, the factories? Mm. And this is just fantastic. This is a sort of 19th century glimpse of... Mm. I, I could almost hear the Coronation Street music mm. playing as mm. I look at this, so, yeah. except, yeah. of course, it's not yeah. a romanticised, idealised... And all and of I the, love the dirt. Way that and the tear, you know, I think that's probably mice or something. It all actually helps. <laughs> that's not that wonderful, this sort of mice-bitten corner of the thing. But look at these horses. These mm. wonderful, sort of dogged, tired horses plodding through this industrial mm. landscape with its chimneys and its smogs. And this picture was made when? I mean, 1852. 1852. 1852. Yeah, so yeah. this is a year after Queen Victoria travels to Manchester on the railway and yeah. says, never yeah. send me on that journey again. I yeah. will not look at yeah. that landscape yeah. with all the dead trees right. and the smog and the smoke and the industry. That's right. That's right. And Pettit is exactly. depicting it. And here, number three, in this sort of introduction to him, mm, mm. you've got this wonderful image that just takes you straight there of, of the Great Exhibition. And he did that with the photographer Delamotte sitting side by side because they were comparing deliberately what photography's good for and what nothing can be to sketch for. And so they both got these series, and we all know about the photographer's uh, Delamotte's, but these were lost, literally lost. Fantastic. I mean, the thing I don't know anything about, really, mm. and I'm sure you do, 
because I'm just an enthusiast. You've colonised me, you've recruited me, and I'm, I'm telling everybody how wonderful Pettit is because I'm so excited by the images. But what I know very little about is the background to the making mm, mm. of these images, the, the, mm. the nature of his life, the, the shape of it. And mm. what, what, who was he? What was he doing? Why, why, did he, why did he... Why did he bother? Yeah. Um, he was a passionate artist, so there was a whole body of his early work which just went into albums and stayed there. That little one is an example, the prison ships off uh, Sheer Sheerness. I must, I must show this to you if I may. Well, no, yeah, I can't no, no, lift take it. it out from under the, um, oh, that on. here, I'll help you. How do I do it? Yeah, let me just oh, lift yeah. it up there. Lift it up. Yeah. Look at this. This is, this again, it's just, only art can do this. Look at, do you see what those are? Those are the prison hulks of Sheerness. Those are the prison ships. It's little black cockroach ships. Dickens writes about it, but nobody has ever, that I know of, painted it. Maybe they have. But they used to then bury the bodies in the sand on the shore, and they're still being dug up now. The bodies of those who died in the prison ships. Which was quite a large number. So th there you have it, the, you know, the tarry, sooty, Dickensian reality of, of, of that part of Victorian Britain. And again, this is the only picture that I know of, mm, of this subject. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. There it is. Phillips yeah. through this, you know, because I think Philip deserves a huge, he's very modest, Philip, but he deserves a huge amount of of gratitude from all of us for having gathered these things together, saved them sometimes from, you know, auction amnesia, gathered them into one place, recognised the importance of the artist and presented it. You know, when you get a rediscovery, you know, I'm not quite, it's not quite in the same realm as Tory Berger and Vermeer, but you know, there's, when you get a there's rediscovery of a great artist who's been forgotten, there's always a very, very important modest man <laughs> in the background and Philip's it. <laughs>